It feels like that the moment we understand everything about the internet, it starts changing. And yeah, of course, there's ChatGPT, AI, and all of the other search engines taking over and competing with Google slowly. In fact, everybody today is worried about ChatGPT and is ChatGPT gonna destroy their SEO rankings? Everybody's worried, is AI gonna completely make their website irrelevant? I personally believe that it's not gonna do that. And in this video, we're gonna be covering on our thoughts on how to rank on ChatGPT. After ChatGPT has been online for like some time right now, we've all realized that it's not gonna completely destroy our rankings and also that it's not gonna make websites irrelevant. So with that, now is the perfect time for us to start identifying how can we rank better on ChatGPT and is our brand actually gonna come up if, when people are searching on the like tool itself. My name is Orosh and I'm the founder and CEO of the Flow Ninja Studio. And over the last few months, like since the beginning of 2025, we've actually gathered about 18 leads which were completely qualified just from ChatGPT and other AI tools. So with that, I mean AI and the AI change has been nothing but good news and good news for our studio long term. And on the side, we're also working with many brands across different industries and we're trying to see kind of how ChatGPT works and we're also kind of trying to create a framework on how you can optimize for ChatGPT in the coming years. So with that, I do personally believe that there is nothing to be scared of, but that this is like the golden age of uh, kind of something new which is happening on the market and that all of us can actually double down and just try to produce even more quality content and that uh, all of us can find ways to rank better on these platforms and in the end, hopefully, get more revenue. So first, how is ChatGPT different from Google? I mean, if you want my non-technical advice is that it's just for me, just another way people are searching. For a really, really long time, everybody was searching just on Google. It was the key place where people came to search. But with the new competition, people are searching on ChatGPT, they're searching on Gemini, they're searching on whatever AI tool they like the most. That's why the way people are interacting with the web is changing. But in terms of websites, that doesn't change anything. In order for ChatGPT or any other AI tools to actually scan your website, you need to, guess what, have a website. And you need to have good content on the website, you need to have an optimized website, and you need to have a brand which is trustworthy and which is recognizable across the whole industry. So in general, nothing is different. The only different thing is like, let's say in this case for ChatGPT, is the way it gathers information and the way it showcases information. There is not a lot of public information and there is not a right or wrong answer. If you go on LinkedIn, everybody's gonna tell you these are the five secrets in order to rank better on ChatGPT or any, or any other browsers. But the reality is, the market is so new that nobody knows what actually works. We're gonna give some tips in this video on kind of what you can do to kind of rank better, but the market is so new that I think it's gonna take a year, two years, three years, five years before people actually start becoming experts and before anybody can actually guarantee any results. So don't don't be scared that you're missing out, just ensure that you're looking at ChatGPT like as another search engine and that you're optimizing for it. One thing that we do know is that ChatGPT gathers data from Bing. If it searches, it searches through Bing. Uh, that it has data uh, based on a cutoff date from their side uh, when you're searching. That it uh, doesn't just follow views and kind of click counts. It also searches for brand relevance. It also searches for authority and it also searches for in general the, the way the, the blogs have been written and if there are good quality content that people are going to reference so with that you can also start thinking about how are you approaching seo and how you're approaching generative optimization so that you rank better on these search engines so let's go ahead and see what we at flow ninja believe is good for generative optimization of course nobody knows what is actually good these are all guesstimates and these are going to be uh, be proven really good or really bad like in the in the meantime but there is nothing that can hurt you if you start looking at these uh, kind of initially. First part is Bing. I mean, like ensure that you're using their webmaster tools to optimize for like Bing search, that your website is crawlable or like that your website is optimized for search through Bing so that everything works as expected and that everything is set up properly there. Second thing is content quality. And Full Ninja, like our agency, is present in about 38% of generative optimization search regarding Webflow. Why? Because we've never used AI to write content. Guess what? I mean, like AI is good at recognizing content that AI has written. So a lot of brands, when AI came out, were like, hey, we just found a secret hack. We're just gonna crank out a million blogs and we're gonna produce four content that nobody ever reads, but it's just there to hack the system. Well, you guessed it, that's not gonna work. You're gonna need to have good quality content 
content that answers proper questions and that has some unique point of views where you're gonna be able to showcase your brand authority and where you're gonna be able to show your unique view of uh, kind of viewpoints on a specific topic. So what does that mean? I mean like nothing has changed from SEO. You need to have good quality content on blogs, good resources, good FAQs, you need to have summaries, uh, bullet points, and many other things regarding usual SEO are gonna apply to generative optimization, but you're not gonna be able to hack the system with just producing tons and tons of AI generated content long term. The next thing that we've seen is offsite presence. So are you mentioned on YouTube, LinkedIn, are you mentioned on uh, kind of Reddit or anywhere around the, the internet, you need to be present and you need to actually have a brand which is not just a website. So you need to be mentioned, you need to be, people need to ask questions about you, etc., etc. Then regarding reviews, I mean like, are you reviewed properly like on uh, platforms like Clutch or uh, Trustpilot or other platforms like that? Do you have digital PR? So are you mentioned on let's say best webflow agency websites? Are you mentioned on, on kind of different places across the web by influencers, by YouTube videos and stuff like that? Just to have enough authority that if uh, AI searches for your brand name or anything like that online, it's gonna find sources not just from your website but from other really credible sources. And the final part is brand positioning. I think more and more the internet grows, I would say, the more important it is for you to have a niche. Like if you're a general brand, it might be pretty hard for AI to go ahead and recommend you to towards a customer who is searching online. So for us, let's say we are a full service Fabful partner for the top 1% of marketers and we're really clear about what we do. And the more clear you are about what you do, the easier it's gonna be for AI on, on, and other search engines to actually recognize your work long term. And if we go around like uh, some specific tactics you can do, well, all of those I believe are the same as for SEO. Again, I'm gonna emphasize that we have our own ways and our own beliefs of what we believe is good for a generative optimization. I do not personally believe that there are secret tactics or that there's stuff that you're missing out and that you should kind of drink your coffee like while shaking in the morning, wondering, are you doing enough? So with that, I mean like just focus on producing good quality stuff and focus on the uh, fundamentals that are relevant even for SEO. And those are, I mean like first schema markups, they have been there for a really, really long time. Everybody knows schema markups. So just ensure that your website is marked properly, kind of like with schema. Then if we go to content and the way we write content, we should write content for AI and also for humans. What does that mean actually? I mean, first is don't just have keywords. I mean, like start searching for intent. What are people searching for? Start thinking about what would people search on AI? What would people search in Google? And start creating different content clusters based on kind of what you do believe that people are gonna search for. So of course, keywords are still important for SEO and everything like that, but you writing content which is oriented just towards keywords is not gonna do much versus you answering uh, questions that people would ask in general through, through your pieces of content is gonna be so much better. And on the other side, of course, adding conversational FAQs, adding bullet points, adding summaries, and like adding kind of different uh, items which are gonna help AI understand the blog a little bit better are definitely gonna help. The next thing we're exploring is LLM.txt. Uh, we're still not sure how does this work and is actually gonna be, an is this gonna be an industry standard or not? Nothing is gonna hurt if you go online, you research what is an LLM.txt file, you upload it to your website and you just have it sitting there. On the other side, I mean like you also have a lot of things with Cloudflare and like we're still not sure how that whole situation is gonna unfold. Is it gonna crawl the websites? Is it gonna let AI agents crawl the websites? Is it gonna charge you additional money for crawling or not crawling the website itself? But uh, the, that's, that's just something which is happening at the moment. And I do believe that we should just monitor the situation and you should ensure that your website is crawlable by Google and that it's crawlable also by AI search engines and that you don't have by accident uh, crawling uh, kind of turned off on Cloudflare. If, if we go and see kind of how are we personally as Flow Ninja ranking on ChatGPT, you can see that about 50% of people are actually doing research. So your user journey is slowly gonna change. You're gonna have a lot more ghost marketers and a lot of more ghost users. So somebody might do research on about Webflow and about us on ChatGPT and they're never gonna visit our website. So about 50% of their time, they're gonna be interacting with our personal website through ChatGPT and other browsers like that. And only when they're ready to make a purchase, they might go to our website and go kind of to those conversion met metrics like the best Webflow agency and then they go to our website. 
and actually book out demo. So I do also believe that kind of metrics and tracking in marketing is gonna become harder and harder and that we're slowly moving away from that performance marketing. For a really long time, uh, everybody was super into like the amount of dollars we put in, the amount of dollars we get out. But if you wanna optimize for AI, I mean like my personal opinion is that there's a lot more brand work to be done as well. And there's a lot more kind of belief and a lot more things that you cannot actually account for and that you cannot actually measure because you're never gonna be able to measure how many people are interacting with your brand on ChatGPT, learning with your, about your brand on ChatGPT, researching about a specific topic on ChatGPT before they go to your website and they actually make a purchase. So the whole buyer journey is slowly changing and that's why I believe branding and kind of positioning and investing into your brand to give value and not just for performance is the next trend and is the next thing that everybody should focus on for their marketing websites. So what do you think? Are you tired of everybody uh, telling you that there is the next secret which is gonna allow you to rank better on ChatGPT, or you might actually have some practical advice to give to people about how you can rank better. Without further ado, I would love to hear your feedback down in the comments below. And if you wanna talk more about optimization about your website on ChatGPT and other AI browsers, make sure to book a call on the link down below.